history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. from KPRC. This is Channel 2 News Midday. Right now at midday, a family is speaking out. The family of a man who was killed by a security guard at a sports bar are now meeting with an attorney. What he's telling us about the next steps in this case. Decision day in New Hampshire. Voters head to the polls for the nation's first Democratic presidential primary. A look at who is coming out ahead as early results come in. Here is a live look outside at the Southwest Brewery. Nasty. Gross. Those are just a few of the words being used to describe what it looks like outside right now. How long this wet, cold weather is going to stick around. We will get to those stories in just a few moments, but first, we start with that breaking news. Major developments in a crash involving a 14-year-old driver and several other children in a stolen pickup. We now know where those kids allegedly grabbed the vehicle from. Police say the owner, Matthew Gill, left a truck running when he went into a restaurant right on Westheimer the day before that crash. Now, an off-duty officer says the children in that car tried to pull them over. When he did, they began to lead him on a high-speed chase that ended with three-vehicle crash on Siegler and Briar Rose Drive. Now, one of the cars was an 80... One of the people in the car was an 89-year-old woman who is now in critical condition. Four juveniles were in the vehicle at the time of that accident, but only two of them have been charged. The juvenile driver is now facing several charges, including endangering a child. Now to the latest on a deadly shooting at a sports bar in northwest Harris County. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Tanaya Wright. And I'm Andy Sirota. The family of the man who police say was shot by a security guard at Ojos Locos on the North Freeway are speaking out and say they want justice for their loved one. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli was with them as they met with their attorney this morning and is joining us now live with what's next in this case. Vince, good morning. Andy, good morning. The family's lawyer says that the security guard shot 28-year-old Javier Sanchez in the back, killing him in cold blood and must be held accountable. Gunfire shatters the peace at Ojos Locos on North Freeway early Sunday morning. The trigger man, a security guard who killed 28-year-old father Javier Sanchez. The security guard, he, he looks like he's, he's, he's shooting somebody like in a gangster movie or something. And uh, the type of conduct that he exhibited needs to be held accountable. Attorney Richard Persutti is representing the Sanchez family. He was a loving, caring family man very involved in family activities. 
Persutti says it was closing time and the security guard was yelling at customers to get out, then pulled a stool from underneath the customer. There was a confrontation and Sanchez, out with family and friends, tried to defuse the situation, according to Persutti. His family is devastated. Uh, his family is, is uh, I met with him yesterday and today. Uh, this has been the worst thing that could ever, ever happen to anybody. A, a, a father, a son, a brother, cousin have been taken away. Persutti says he plans to sue the security guard, the security guard's company, and Ojos Locos. Uh, we're going to gather information, and when I feel that we have the necessary information that I, that I want, we're going to file a lawsuit, and, and we're going to move this thing forward. This, this family is going to get justice, and I'm going to get it for them. And the grand jury will look over this case and decide if charges need to be filed. The big question here was the shooting and self-defense. Reporting live in North Houston, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Vince, thank you. It is primary day in New Hampshire, and the first votes have already been cast. As is tradition, voting kicks off just after midnight in a few small towns near the Canadian border. Alice Barr is in Manchester this morning. She is joining us with the very latest from the campaign trail, including a visit from President Trump. Polls are open in New Hampshire in a wide open race. Hey. Candidates getting in some final face time as voters have their say in the first in the nation primary. The first votes are already tallied in a long held tradition. Three tiny towns making their choice just after midnight. Here in Dixville Notch, a surprise. Michael Bloomberg, the write in winner, taking three of the five votes cast. He won't even be on the ballot until Super <laughs> Tuesday. Amy Klobuchar picked up the most votes from all three towns combined. She's been surging after a strong debate and is counting on a good finish here. If the early votes, the midnight polls, are any uh, indication, we're going to have a pretty good night tonight. Bernie Sanders is the leader in New Hampshire, and today a new Quinnipiac University poll has him passing Joe Biden for the first time nationally. We are in this together. Every family in America has its problems, and we have got to stand together. With Sanders leading from the left, the rest of the field is trying to position themselves as a more centrist alternative. They know my heart. They know my head. We've been at this more than a year now, uh, mm. spreading our message about how we can put together uh, a campaign based on belonging, the campaign that I believe will ultimately go on and defeat Donald Trump. All trying to prove they have the best shot to beat President Trump, who held a huge rally in Manchester last night, reminding Democrats of the true fight ahead. There is even more emphasis on New Hampshire after the contested results out of Iowa. All the candidates want a clean win here to ride that momentum, adding to the pressure. No candidate has ever gone on to be the party's nominee without finishing in the top two here. In Manchester, New Hampshire, Alice Barr, NBC News. Ooh, thank you, Alice. It is a gloomy, chilly day out there. Yeah, one of those days where you probably <laughs> just want to keep the covers over your head, right, right? Britta? You just want to snuggle, put on a good movie, have a sweatshirt on, some hot cocoa. All those are good vibe things, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of nasty out there. If you are going to be out and about, grab your umbrella, grab a jacket. Those will be your best friends today. Uh, the good news is our rainfall is very light. We're not tracking downpours, thunder and lightning. These are pesky rain showers, but the drizzle and mist, it's extremely inconvenient. And our road are going to be a little slick out there. Uh, let's take you right into the Beltway in the Loop. You can see some scattered showers, especially along the 59 corridor and moving across 90. Just be careful if you're coming in. Give yourself that extra drive time just because you need to make sure that you're driving appropriately. Uh, we have temperatures still in the 40s off to the north and west. We really have not warmed up considerably from this morning, which is what we expected. We've only tacked on about 3 degrees, and we're still in the 50s here in town. We could get close to 60 degrees, but keep in mind the majority of your day is going to feel like what it feels like right now. It's going to feel cool and breezy. Our winds coming in uh, from the north about 10 to 15 miles per hour, and that's going to continue to just keep us on the cool side. So again, 50s during the majority of the day, maybe up to 60 degrees. And we do have a 30 to 40 percent chance of rainfall for the entire day, but the rain that falls down will be very light. Andy, that's going to change tomorrow. We have a cold front on the way. It's going to bring in some thunderstorms, but a nice payoff for the end of the work week. Details on that straight ahead. All right, Britta, sounds good. Thanks so much. Remember, you can track the showers anytime you want. All you have to do is download Frank's free forecast weather app. Just search KPRC in your Apple or Android app store.
Police have now identified the man who was shot and killed at a McDonald's in North Houston. The gunman, however, still on the run at this hour. We are told 27-year-old Christopher Howard stopped at that restaurant last night on Airline in West Tidwell so that his girlfriend could use the bathroom. Police say Howard was shot multiple times as he was getting out of his vehicle. He was taken to an area hospital where he later died. Investigators believe Howard and the gunman knew each other. Investigators are looking for the burglar who left a truck running inside a CVS overnight. That person crashed a truck into the store on Gleanlock Forest Drive in Northwest Harris County. They tried to steal an ATM, but they were unsuccessful. Police ran the plates on the truck and found out it was stolen from Tomball. They are now reviewing security cameras. Now to the very latest on the coronavirus crisis. Passengers quarantined on the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan. Well, they may have to stay longer than they originally thought. 135 of the 3,700 people on board have the deadly coronavirus. That includes 25 Americans. Seven days into the quarantine, scientists question if these new cases appeared before or after that quarantine period. Some patients still show symptoms after 14 days. So uh, yesterday they gave us a higher quality of mask. This is what we see the crew wearing when they bring us our meals. We're taking our temperature three times a day and reporting it. Passengers may have to stay on board after February 19th. The death toll for the coronavirus has now surpassed 1,000. Closer to home now, we're going to hear from Harris County Judge Lena Hildago later today. She's going to lay out her plan on how the county is trying to control rumors about the deadly virus and how it will be used as a source for more reliable information. Police need your help finding a 21-year-old man with autism. They don't believe Kalen Wright is in danger, but he has a cognitive learning disability. Someone told police they saw him walking around HCC's campus. That person says they waved at him and he waved back. Prior to that, Wright was last seen crossing Westheimer and Kirkwood. Call police if you've seen him. Houston is remembering the life of a woman who gave her life to service for nearly seven decades. This morning, we're going to honor Anna Russell. She was a former city secretary. Mayor Turner joined her family and friends for a celebration of life. Russell was 88 years old and worked with nine different mayors. She always said she worked for the citizens of Houston. When asked who her favorite mayor is, she replied, all of them. This great lady, Anna, was an incredible civil servant. Her dedication, her steadfast integrity always will be admired. In lieu of flowers, the family is requesting donations to be made to the renovation of Herman Square at City Hall. A longtime police official in Vermont suddenly resigns. Coming up, what she's accused of doing that has her out of a job today. And next, a bombshell dropped in a college admission scandal. What investigators have uncovered, that is a definite black eye for actress Lori Loughlin and her husband. You're watching Channel 2, Houston's home for news. New evidence in the college cheating case against actress Lori Laughlin. NBC's Sam Brock has the resume that prosecutors say was padded to help get her daughter into school. Hi, everybody. It's Olivia Jade. As recently as five days ago, Olivia Jade, whose famous parents are caught in the center of a sweeping college admission scandal, posted these pictures to Instagram of life returning to normal. But now, the former USC student is staring at a new layer of a deepening scandal. Prosecutors releasing this college resume in a court filing that appears to be Olivia Jade's, though the name is redacted. The bullet points apparently portraying a litany of lies for a student authority say never participated in crew. Two gold medals at the San Diego Crew Classic, a fourth place finish at the head of the Lagoon Foster City and other competitions. Last month, Lachlan and her husband, fashion designer Massimo Giannulli, argued payments to get their daughter into USC were legitimate donations, not bribes. The two, who have pleaded not guilty, face dozens of years behind bars of convicted for federal bribery and conspiracy to commit money laundering, mail and wire fraud. Hey guys, the big question Olivia now, oh, will Olivia hey guys, Jade, Olivia who has not been charged, be dragged into the case? Federal prosecutors may use her to pressure these defendants into pleading guilty rather than have their daughter testify against them. The latest chapter in an ongoing saga. Sam Brock, NBC News. 
A longtime police official in Vermont resigned after admitting that she was behind a pair of fake social media accounts. Burlington Deputy Police Chief Jan Wright will officially leave her position on February 21st. She was with the department for nearly 20 years. Under one of those false accounts, Wright blasted two city councilors as being inappropriate and careless. This is all regarding a case of a police officer accused of murder. Wright has apologized for her actions, saying that she was deeply embarrassed by her behavior. A family in Washington state is now suing Child Protective Services, saying that the state should have known that two boys were in danger before they were killed by their own father. Back in 2012, Charles and Judy Cox were taking care of their grandchildren, Brayden and Charlie. Now they were in the middle of a custody battle with the boy's father, Josh Powell. During what was supposed to be a supervised visit, Powell attacked and killed his sons. Then he set his home on fire, killing himself. The boy's grandfather says that he called to warn Child Protective Services two days before the murders. Harvey Weinstein's defense has rested its case today after calling seven witnesses. This comes after yesterday's shocking testimonies in the sexual assault trial. Actress Talita Maya says Jessica Mann did not seem upset after the alleged rape. Maya says Mann called the Hollywood producer her spiritual soulmate. Another accuser, Lauren Young, says Claudia Salinas was closing the door on her and Weinstein while Young was being assaulted. Weinstein denies having non-consensual sex. It was one of the biggest cyber attacks ever, and this week that massive Equifax data breach has now led to four people being indicted. The U.S. Justice Department is accusing the Chinese military of the 2017 Equifax data breach. Now they are seeking prosecution against four members of China's secretive cyber team called the 54th Research Institute. But the FBI admits these four people will likely never face justice. They also say right now it's unclear if China ever used any any of that stolen data. Meteorologist Berta Merwin joining us now. Temperatures really struggling to warm up today. Yeah, I mean, you just combine the wind and also the overcast skies, that damp feeling to the air, you kind of just want to snuggle inside today. Yeah. So um, if you are doing that, enjoy it. If you are heading out, be prepared. That means jackets and umbrellas to get you through your day. Uh, this is a live look outside at our rather gloomy skies. The good news is it's not going to last forever. We have sunshine on the way. We just have to wait a little bit till it gets here. Uh, so that's a live look over downtown. Uh, temperatures right now pretty close to where we started this morning. Uh, we are still in the 40s out to the northwest. Uh, Brenham, you're at 47 degrees. Here in Houston, we're at 55 degrees. In Galveston, you're at 59. So it's rather cool. We're maybe going to warm up by about 3 or 4 degrees, which honestly, you're not going to notice the difference. So as you step outside, what you feel is what you should prepare to feel for the rest of the day. A few light scattered showers on exact track radar. The heaviest rainfall well off to the north. But if you are traveling to north Texas, you're going to run into some steadier rainfall. For us, it's all about that light mist, drizzle, pesky rain showers. They're going to be out and about today. North winds coming in about 10 to 15 miles per hour, so that's kind of adding insult to injury. It's a little brisk out there, and we have fog to contend with right along the coast, visibly down to about a half mile in Galveston, and about a mile and a quarter in Angleton. It's going to be lingering around until the cold front rolls through tomorrow. So for today, anticipate temperatures in the 50s. We might squeak out 60 degrees. It's going to be cool, damp, and chilly, and a little breezy as well. We're tracking a lot of moisture moving out of the Pacific at the same time. Look at that spin moving out of the southwest. That's going to drag the cold front through. So until we get that upper level system to really kick through, we can't clear out the skies. But here's the timeline for everything. This afternoon, you really get the sense of what it's going to be. It's going to be a little damp out there, chilly and cloudy. As we go into tomorrow morning, this front that's offshore kind of fizzles out, tries to meander a little bit as a warm front, but I don't think it's going to warm us up too dramatically. Look at that cold front arriving during the middle part of the morning. Temperatures behind it dropping to the 40s for a little bit into the low 50s. We are going to see some thunderstorms with it, but the risk of severe weather is rather low. I think we'll have a lot of rumbles of thunder, though, and a few downpours across town. By 6 p.m., the front is out of here, and we start to dry out, and then we finally get to enjoy some clear skies, and that's going to lead to a sunny day for Thursday. Beautiful weather moving in for Friday as well. For the cold front, we're anticipating about a half inch to inch of rainfall, so again, no flooding concern. We're just going to have those rumbles of thunder, a few downpours, maybe some tricky areas to navigate on the roads tomorrow, and then we get to enjoy the payoff. Sunshine moving in for Thursday and Friday. Our morning temperatures are going to be chilly in the 40s, but our afternoon highs seasonably cool in the low 60s and then we'll have a little warm up as we head into our holiday week and unfortunately rain's knocking on our doorstep as well so those scattered showers are back in the forecast for our holiday weekend we just can't really kick them out of here
Yeah. No. <laughs> I was like, we can't. It's going to be warmer, though. I mean, we're mm -hmm. looking at 70s as we head into President's Day next week. The silver nice. lining. Exactly. Brilliant. There's always something. Yeah, there's always something. Thanks mm -hmm. so much. Yes, thank you. Well, a Texas family is now dealing with a rather annoying situation. They have called in a specialist to clean up fiberglass shards from their daughter's bedroom. Coming up, how they ended up there and what they did that may have led to that problem. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis. Stop walking around in the dark. We're testing out the Night Angel, a custom light that promises to never burn out. How it works and how much it'll cost you coming up. North Carolina. Sometimes you just need a little light to illuminate a dark space or a walkway. You don't want to have to switch it on and off, and you don't want a bulky light that you have to unplug when you need the electric outlet. That's right. This morning, consumer expert Amy Davis is testing a product that checks all of those boxes. The Night Angel. The Night Angel uses LED lights. They're pretty bright, and the manufacturer says they are guaranteed to last a lifetime. Belinda Folan keeps her kitchen nice and tidy, and even though there's not a lot of clutter, she worries about getting up in the middle of the night and walking without much light. The hallways, the kitchen, and uh, leading into the kitchen, sometimes even the bathroom. Several of the outlets need light in at night so we can maneuver without having a full light. And night lights, well, the Night Angel commercial sums them up about right. But regular night lights are bulky. They tie up your outlets. Plus, you're constantly replacing them. The Night Angel cost $6.18 at Fry's Electronics, and all you need is a screwdriver to install it. It sounds really promising, so we'll see. In about a minute, Belinda unscrewed her old outlet cover and put the Night Angel on. These small prongs plug in to provide power to the Night Angel, leaving your electric outlets free. And as soon as she put it on, it lit up her hallway. If I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> the Night Angel has a built-in light sensor, so the LED lights illuminate when it's dark. Here's Belinda's hallway without the Night Angel, and now the same hallway with the Night Angel. Belinda is sold. It's just for the convenience of not having to plug in, and it looks nice. The only problem, now she wants more. I, I say thumbs up. On my Facebook page, a lot of you told me you already have several of these Night Angel lights around your home. If you want to buy one, you can find a lot of them that are not this same brand at varying prices. We only tested the Night Angel, but several people have told me they purchased some online that work well, too, at a lower price point. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis, KPRC, Channel 2 News. A major shakeup in the wireless industry. That's right. A judge has now cleared the way for T-Mobile to take over Sprint. We'll tell you what this means for you coming up. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. If you've tried pills, creams, cleansers for cystic acne and can't find relief, I've got details on one pill that's not even supposed to be for acne, but a lot of people swear it clears up their skin. Details are coming up. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Andy and Tanaya back with you, boy, not much in the way of sunshine today. No, striking out big time. We are definitely striking out. It's chilly. Yeah. It's gloomy. When it's will two. this end? I'll say, what's the third? Uh, yucky. There you go. All right. <laughs> see, there, back to you. I know. <laughs> yeah, and we're done. Working. It really is. Yeah, we're not going to see any sun today. Probably not much tomorrow either until we get that front moving through. So we're going to be stuck in the muck out there. And this is what it looks like. We've got visibility issues. I'll show you those in a sec. Uh, we've got dense fog marine advisories as you get just offshore. And look at these temperatures. Well, the front came through, didn't it? We were at 70s yesterday. We're sitting in the mid and low 50s today. And we've still got some scattered showers moving in from the south and southwest. It's generally moving with the upper level flow in the atmosphere. And that's why we're going to continue to see those kind of drifting in from the south and southwest. Kind of go big picture on this here. Here's what we need to come through. This is tomorrow's area of low pressure. This is going to turn into tomorrow's cold front. But notice how far away it is. It's over there in Arizona and all the heavy snow that it's producing in towards El Paso. And as you get into the mountains of southern New Mexico. So we've got winter storm watches and warnings out west. We've also got flood advisories and flood flash flood watches just to the east of us as they're going to be setting up a potential for more heavy rain across the deep south. We're kind of caught in the middle. So it's going to be a cold afternoon. These temperatures that are in the upper 40s to low to mid 50s now will not budge much. We'll see a bit of a bump, but it means that more rain's on the way. I'll track tomorrow's cold front. We'll take it hour by hour in the timing. And when we finally do see a little bit of that sunshine, Andy, coming up in a bit. All right, Justin, thanks so much. Remember, you can track the showers anytime you want. All you have to do is download Frank's free forecast weather app. Just search KPRC in your Apple or Android app store.
Here's a look at some of the morning's big stories. Well, it is primary day in New Hampshire. Democratic presidential candidates are trying to round up every supporter they can. The first votes have already been cast. And as is tradition, three small towns near the Canadian border made their choice just after midnight. But today, the New Hampshire election officials say they are confident they will avoid the kind of chaotic tech meltdown that we saw during last week's Iowa caucuses. NBC's Morgan Radford has a look at how the New Hampshire primary election is different than a caucus, relying on more traditional methods to get votes recorded and then get those results out. It's a caucus hangover. After waiting nearly a week for the Iowa caucus results to come in, Pete Buttigieg has a narrow lead in delegates. But chaos continues, with calls for re-canvassing from the former mayor and Senator Bernie Sanders. Let's win this thing. Let's transform America. And with Iowa's first-in-the-nation status now in question, primary voters in New Hampshire say their process will be the calm after the storm. So you think New Hampshire is ready? I know New Hampshire is ready. You're not worried? I'm not worried at all about it. New Hampshire kind of has a reputation as doing it right. It's the nation's first primary, more than 100 years old. All but three presidents in the last 70 years have won a primary among these voters. I have admired how seriously you take the responsibility. We are going to, as usual, New Hampshire, surprise the country. And after the caucus confusion in Iowa, election officials here say this is a process that can be trusted. Everything here is done by hand. You get an official ballot and you mark your vote by hand on paper. When you walk inside the booth, no apps, no electronics. Then you take your ballot to be counted. So every single ballot is then counted in this box. Correct. Is it connected to the internet? No, it's not. So this isn't connected, nothing in this room. No, nothing is uh, connected to the internet. So. so everything is just by pin, paper, that's it. That's it. New Hampshire's Secretary of State, who oversees the election, says simple is safer. And you can't hack a pencil. Which is why voters here in the Granite State say they're confident in the process, even if many are unsure about the candidates. If Iowa had come out with a clear winner, I would feel more compelled to lean that way. A lot of people are undecided. So people are kind of everywhere. They are all over the place. Morgan Radford, NBC News, Nashua, New Hampshire. The family of a man shot and killed by a security guard is meeting with an attorney today. That shooting happened at the Ojos Locos Club right along the North Freeway in northwest Harris County. Cell phone video shows the security guard firing his weapon. A second victim was shot in the arm. Witnesses say the security guard was involved in some sort of altercation with a group of people there. A former Galena Park ISD bus attendant accused of assault is in court right now. Sergio Lopez is charged with misdemeanor assault, accused of touching a 13-year-old disabled girl. Investigators say bus surveillance video shows Lopez trying to rub the girl's leg on three occasions. They also say he tried to kiss her twice in January. Lopez was fired last month. Channel 2's Taisha Walker is in the courtroom and will bring us the new developments. Now to the coronavirus crisis. A British businessman who is believed to have infected several people has now been identified. His name is Steve Walsh, and he has recovered from the coronavirus. Walsh had traveled to a sales conference in Singapore. A mudslide in Monroe, Washington is impacting people who live near the area. Right now, 44 homes are being affected by the road covered in mud. The mudslide is so bad, an engineer told residents that the road might need to be rebuilt altogether, which could take up to a year. Dirt bikes and ATVs seem to be the only safe way to travel there at this point. A Texas family's simple attempt to clean a child's bedroom turned into an emergency. They had to call a decontamination team because of a mattress cover. That's right, Arizo Dotes spoke with them about a warning that they have for anyone who sleeps on a memory foam mattress. Look closely at this bed frame. And the shards are long. They're probably about a half an inch. It's not glitter that's shining. It was literally like dust um, settles everywhere. It was exactly like that, only it was glass. Michelle Cantrell says her 17-year-old daughter's bed was covered in fiberglass. You would never know it's there. Until you, until you feel it, until you start coughing. Cantrell says they unzipped the cover to wash it and noticed this tear. She says they didn't think anything of it, 
But several days later, she started feeling itchy after putting on a shirt that had been washed with the mattress cover. I turned mine inside out and just, you know, shone a light on it just to see if I could see anything. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what was going on with it. And then at that point, you could see, you know, all the shards of fiberglass just sticking up like knives. DHP Furniture out of Canada sells the mattress. The family bought theirs on Amazon. A spokesperson with the company says an order to meet U.S. federal mattress flammability standards, many memory foam mattresses are constructed with a fire retardant knit fabric barrier that includes glass fiber threads. The spokesperson went on to say that it's something that's used across the mattress industry and the fire barrier is concealed under the quilting of the mattress cover. We don't know how long she's been sleeping in loose fiberglass, um, which is very concerning. Cantrell says they spent days vacuuming and wiping down everything. They finally had to call in a decontamination team, which specializes in cleaning up crime scenes and drug labs. We ended up having to throw out all of the pillows and blankets, about half of her clothes, um, just because it, they were, we couldn't get the fiberglass out. The team came back six times to remove all the fiberglass. Glass. No, there's a little bit of dust right there still. But still, the family can spot a sparkle here and there. There was no warning label on the actual mattress. Um, there was no warning label anywhere near the zipper or the cover or, or anything. Wow. Now, Michelle did find the owner's manual for the mattress online, and it says not to remove the cover and to spot clean only. They said they did check with their family doctor and were told as long as the coughing and itching stops, they should be okay. A major shakeup for the wireless industry. A federal judge has paved the way for T-Mobile's $26.5 billion takeover of Sprint. The judge approved it, rejecting objections from a group of states. After the deal closes, the number of major U.S. wireless companies would shrink from four to three. T-Mobile says the deal would benefit consumers as it becomes a stronger competitor to Verizon and AT&T. Well, I spy a Houston Texan in the car right next to me. Not me, but it did happen to some fans. It did. <laughs> Coming up, the viral post of their encounter with Deshaun Watson and what the NFL star is saying after the brief meeting. And the Oscars are getting called out today. Why some people say they're upset in the about the in memoriam segment honoring those who have passed away. The names who are left off that list coming up. But first, here's a live look at Wall Street as we head into break. In today's entertainment news, following in her father's footsteps, former pro wrestler turned actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson's daughter, well, she is now training to become a WWE fighter. Simone Johnson is working out in Orlando. The Rock is the first third generation wrestler at the WWE after his father and grandfather. The Rock said on his Instagram that he is humbled and grateful about his daughter's work. The In Memoriam segment of Sunday's Academy Awards has caused some viewers grief. Some questioned why Luke Perry, Cameron Boyce, Tim Conway, and others were not included in the annual tribute to those in the filmmaking community who have passed. Perry's exclusion was an especially sore spot for some, given that he appeared in the Oscar-nominated film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The Beverly Hills 90210 star died last March following a stroke. He was 52. The Academy says it receives hundreds of requests. This is not the first year the Academy Awards has faced questions about this segment. Well, there's some good news for rapper Eminem. A surprise performance at the Oscars has proven to be a really good thing for him. Lose Yourself is seeing a massive sales bump after his performance. The song from the movie Eight Mile won the Academy Award for Best Original Song back in 2003. Eminem was not in attendance to accept that award, but he tweeted after the Oscars saying, thanks for having me at the Academy Awards. Sorry, it took me 18 years to get here. 
Ford versus Ferrari raced its way to a couple of statues at the Oscars on Sunday night. This week, the High Octane Best Picture nominee will be available for purchase. That is right. You can also pick up a copy of the animated fan favorite, Frozen 2. Elsa and company fell short in the bid for the Best Original Song Award. Raphael Seth, though, has more on this week's Video View. The unique cast of characters in this film could never have accomplished what they had accomplished without each other. Christian Bale and Matt Damon go round in circles in Ford versus Ferrari. Bale plays race car driver Ken Miles in this high-octane true story. The Ford Motor Company attempts to buy Ferrari in the late 1960s, but the legendary racing brand rebukes the offer, spurring Ford to hire legendary car designer Carroll Shelby, who builds a car around his cantankerous British driver in an attempt to humble the Italians on the world stage. Ford versus Ferrari is on digital, DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K. Oh, look at no selling man, dude. I don't start any trouble. Either. It is a big fire. Sterling K. Brown describes the fire spirit in the bonus features for Frozen 2. This highly anticipated sequel made over a billion dollars worldwide. Elsa hears a calling from beyond the kingdom and wonders why she was born with magical powers. That leads to a dangerous journey flanked by her squad, where they can only hope her once hidden abilities will be enough to protect them. Frozen 2 is digital this week. We don't know how she got out of her room. Came back for a midnight round, she was gone. Leonardo DiCaprio searches for The Departed in Shutter Island. This film is one of five collaborations between DiCaprio and director Martin Scorsese and celebrates its 10th anniversary with a first-time 4K release. They add Mark Ruffalo to the mix to investigate the disappearance of a patient at a mental hospital, but it's DiCaprio who may end up getting lost. That's the video view, Raphael Seth, NBC News. It is a big week for the Houston Astros. All roads lead to West Palm Beach, Florida for spring training. Pitchers and catchers are set to report on Wednesday and begin workouts the next day with their new manager, Dusty Baker. Full squad workouts open next Monday. Sports director Randy McElvoy is in Florida. Look for his live reports both here on the air and online at click2houston.com. A couple of Texans fans are now going viral for their reaction to seeing Deshaun Watson driving down the street. You've got to check this out. My boy B. White in the Billy truck. Oh, yeah. I see you, boy. Hey, represent, baby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, this video has since been reposted and got more than 65,000 likes. Even Watson sharing the tweet saying, I love Houston. It is one of the biggest competitions in New York, and we will find out later today who will be top dog at the Westminster Dog Show. Aaron McLaughlin met some of the dogs who could go all the way. Backstage at the Westminster Dog Show, game faces are going on. So Grayson's about to go on. Yes. yes. How are you feeling? Um, anxious. At this parade of pooches, the big question, who will win best in show? Here at Westminster, any dog can win. Maybe the newbie, the Ozawak, an ancient West African hunting hound. But it's too soon to say at the second oldest sporting event in the country. All the floofing and the fluffing. It takes me five hours once a week just to bathe her. Fiercely strutting their stuff to claim best of group. What makes Elton special? Everything. And a chance at canine glory. Do you think he's going to go all the way? Oh, sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Last year, a wire fox terrier took top dog. His full name, King Arthur Van Folleny Home. But some say he's got nothing on Scamp the Tramp, winner of the 2019 World's Ugliest Dog Contest. Every dog is so cute in their own way. Proof or woof, beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. Aaron McLaughlin, NBC News, New York. Oh, They're all sweet so faces, cute. I know. I'm just saying, if you've never seen Best in Show, the, the, that's the, the movie. movie. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. It's been a while. It, find it. It is it's like its own. It is Christopher it, subculture. It, yeah. Oh, yes, quite. It definitely is. It's funny because uh, Dominique Soxa and her uh, beautiful dog she has, Oscar, mm -hmm. they do some as well. She's right. got a handler of this and that. We've talked. And it's one of her wow. favorite movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's if you haven't seen it, you got to watch it because it is. It, it takes it to like twelve. <laughs> those folks there. So it's really funny. It's a great film. Anyway, uh, yeah. So th then we got that with the doggies, and of course we're trying to fight our way through the fog this morning so I far. Know. I want to show you something really interesting down in Galveston, though. Remember yesterday, we Galveston was just like socked, right? We, if you were watching last night with myself and Frank, you noticed that. The fog was so thick 
that, that you couldn't even see out towards Murdoch's. Well, that was because the wind was coming out of the southeast, and so it was pushing that sea fog on shore, right? Today, we've got a pretty steady north wind because the front has moved through, and so that dense fog advisory is not there. And in fact, all of the fog has been pushed just offshore. Really interesting to see what the wind can do when you get that north northeast wind. Now, officially, we're still reporting foggy skies, but that's just because the humidity is basically at about 100%, and officially, the actual visibility is about a half mile. But it's really interesting to see while you can actually see it today versus uh, la or yesterday, I should say, when that just wasn't the case. Now, we do have some other fog issues out there as well, from Pearland down to Angleton, slicing its way up towards Brenham and up to Huntsville. So certainly be careful for that. But for the most part, it is just bone chillingly chillier today than it was yesterday. And in fact, we're running at least 15 degrees, maybe 20 in some spots is up near College Station. As you get out towards Huntsville, Navasota, and into Katy, we're barely getting to 50 degrees. So it's going to be a very cool afternoon. And that northeast wind continues. There's the front right there. You see where the winds kind of combine? They kind of stick together. So it's offshore. Now, eventually, this will start to lift by late night tonight as a, kind of a, a weak, warm front. There won't be much to it. And it'll just sort of fall apart before that next storm system kicks in. But boy, oh boy, the temperatures not only just here, but across the state of Texas on the cool side, anywhere from the 40s and 30s. And how about 76 in New Orleans, giving an indication where that warm air has been shoved to. So there is tomorrow's low. You can see it swirling there, bringing some rain over towards Arizona, some heavy snow across the southern Rockies in New Mexico, and the jet stream still pointed right across the state of Texas. And so that bowling ball is going to roll right on through. As it does, we expect to see our best chance for some more widespread showers and thunderstorms. So cloudy, chilly, and damp for the rest of the day today, even by this evening. Very light showers, not much out there in terms of anything heavy. But notice it as that next front comes through by early tomorrow morning, gets a little more aggressive by about 8 a.m. We're going to have to watch it. The temperatures will be back into the upper 60s before they crash into the 50s and 40s once again. Most of this rain and some of the heavier storms that will stay, I think mainly to the north of I-10, uh, will start to wrap up by about 4 or 5 o'clock. And once it does, we'll see a much cooler afternoon after that. But notice that we start to see some breaks in the clouds. And that means that we'll be looking at a better looking Thursday and Friday forecast just in time for Valentine's Day. Get back to mostly sunny skies both Thursday and Friday. Cool starts in the 40s and nice comfortable afternoons in the low 60s before the rain returns as we head in towards the back half of the weekend forecast. Yeah, my yard and my garden are going to love this. I think they're going to love it and maybe get a little bit of that cedar pollen. Yeah, well. yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. Justin, thanks so much. Right, guys. Well, the pill that is used to fight against blood pressure is helping in the fight against hormonal acne. Health reporter Haley Hernandez explains. A miracle drug used to cure acne that's not a drug for acne at all. Health reporter Haley Hernandez explains how an off-label use for a blood pressure pill is helping women in their 30s and 40s. Hormonal acne can hit you for the first time as an adult, and the harsh treatments used in teenagers won't always work well for adults. A lot of times, nothing works. That's why some are calling spironolactone a miracle cure. Erica Padilla says she struggled with acne and not just ordinary breakouts, but deep, painful red cysts below the skin along her jaw. I probably tried about four or five different medications. They were very painful. It even hurt when I would eat. She says Dr. Sherry Ingraham from Advanced Dermatology in Sugarland found the cure for her. This tiny pill called spironolactone, typically used as a blood pressure medication, made the hard to treat acne disappear. Dr. Ingraham says the pill has been around for decades, but it's typically a last ditch effort to clear the skin. You know, typically we talk about Accutane and antibiotics, but spironolactone is another class of medication. It's what we think of as a hormone blocking drug. So we use this medication a little bit differently. A lot of times I'll start a patient on this medicine with antibiotics orally and then after a few months I'll take them off the oral antibiotic but they'll maintain on the spironolactone and that's because spironolactone takes about six weeks to start working and really at three months you see the true effects of the medication. Dr. Ingraham says men, pregnant women, kidney patients or people who find relief with topicals should not try spironolactone but for patients like Erica this is everything she was waiting for. It came to the point where I don't even have breakouts anymore. Patients on blood pressure medication need to consult with a doctor who prescribed that medicine before using spironolactone for acne. But in general, Dr. Ingraham says side effects are mild. Most people do tolerate this drug well, except because it is a hormone blocker that can hurt men and pregnant women, it cannot be used for them at all. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez, KPRC, Channel 2 News.